Hello, hello, and welcome to Rory's Brainworks, where we get creative and see if it works. Today, we're going to be creating a spider web harness. Yes, I suppose we could. Meticulously creating a spider web to lure prey into our clutches. I mean, everything is inherently dangerous. Speaking of which, we must first talk about safe, sane, and consensual safety. Be sure to have some safety shears with you at all times. You can always get a new rope. Can't get a new life. And consensual, me, Marie, and Crochet Rory are all consenting adults. Communication is key. Now, before we take a deep dive into today's tutorial, we must first thank my sponsor, Knothead Nylon. Knothead Nylon is the destination for all your premium nylon rope bondage needs. Easy to clean, water resistant, up to 1100 pounds of weight load, and in a wide array of beautiful, vibrant colors, Knothead Nylon will slake your rope desires. At checkout, put in discount code RORY10 for 10% off. Now, how do we accomplish this? First, we're going to get a base that we're going to create a crisscross type pattern on the body. And then we will use another rope to kind of create the spiraling weave of the spider web. Very easy process, two ropes, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different ways to do it as well. A lot of experimentation involved. So I'm very excited to see some people's homework rope. So let's grab our base and get down to it. To accomplish creating this crisscross base, what we're going to do is have one vertical line, one horizontal line, and then two different oblique lines on the body. I'm going to show you a way that makes it much simpler to create. So we're going to take the bite of our rope, the middle of our rope, and we're going to wrap it around the neck. And much like a Hishi Karata, we're going to create an overhand knot. Very, very simple. We're just going to take it in our hands, wrap it around the back of our hands, which kind of creates a loop. And then from behind, we're going to go through that loop. I think we're going to keep that overhand knot centered just above the jugular notch right here where the sternum starts. This will essentially become our vertical part of the crisscross pattern. This is going to go down below and around the crotch. Now as it comes up from the crotch, what I'm going to do is bring it up to where essentially the chest is that we want it to cross, which is going to be just above the nipple line. And we're going to kind of create a L shape right here. Just like that. Mostly because we're going to come around this way and then keep this up. So having a little bit of tension on it as you pull it around the chest. Now as I come across the chest with the rope, I'm just going to go underneath it and apply counter tension going the opposite way. So the L was going this way. That means we're going to create the counter tension going this way. Now what we can do in order to create more tightness is to pull the L closer towards that right side of the ribs, and then we'll pull it back this way when we create our counter tension. That's gonna make it a little bit more tight around the body. Now be aware, the webbing that we will be doing in the spiral pattern will create its own sort of tightness. So you don't want this to be overly tight. Now, once we've created that counter tension going up to the shoulder, we'll go back down the front, and we're simply just going to cross over right here, right where everything's intersecting, and we're gonna go down, around and towards the back. Now we're not going to do anything special right now. We're simply going to take this rope, go around the middle of the back, and then up this way. It was a very easy journey. We came down this way, we crossed over the intersection, we followed the ribs around towards the back, and then mirrored it the same way, around the ribs, from the back, up towards the shoulder making sure we cross over the intersection right there. Then we'll kind of tie it off in the back. Now, as we come down over the shoulder, we're going to lock this in place with a bit of rope we have left. I'm gonna start by going over this one and under this one, mostly because this one is already depressed. And what do we do to our depressed friends? We uplift them, that means going underneath it. What do we do to our friends on our high horse? Well, we ground them, so we gotta push that down. So what goes over? must go under. So saith the Rory. Uh, every video needs one. So following that pattern, we're, since we went under here, we're going to go over here and then under. And that's where most of that is going to stop at this point in time, because we're going to cross over this X that those two made. I'm going to cross over both of them and we're going to come out right here. We've kind of created this circle and that circle has given us this space right here where we're going to solidify it in place. 
So once we've gone around, crossed over these two, I'm going to put the, from underneath, I'm going to put the rest of the rope through there, and then we'll tighten that up. That gets locked in place without losing a bit of its charm. It's locked and it looks nice without, you know, losing. That's now locked in place and we can move on to the webbing. Now we got our crisscross pattern. If you remember, our vertical line was the one that we did first, which means it's below everything. That means that's where we're going to start it. That means it's going to create a little bit of motion where it pulls up on all of those and doesn't get sunk down below. Makes it so it's almost an even plane at that point. So right here, that's where we're going to start. We're going to start close and then we're going to start spiraling outward. The easiest way to start is by creating a girth hitch. So we're going to take the bite of our web rope. We're going to go underneath this vertical, pull it through a little bit. Now we got this little hole that we created and we're just going to stuff our rope through that hole and pull through. And once we pull that taut, it's going to create that little starting zone there. Now that we have our starting zone, we're going to jump from rope to rope, creating a knot and then spiraling it around. To make it easiest, I'm going to do a, a half hitch. A lot of people like to do a munter, and I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. In fact, that's the thumbnail for this video, is the munter hitch. But I'm going to show you one that's slightly easier to me, and has like a little bit of a more spiral flow to it, is the half hitch. So what we're going to do is when we take the rope onto this next one right here, we're just going to create a half circle like that. And we're going to go underneath and through here, like that, almost creating a buckle. So we'll create a C, making sure that the C swings inward towards the middle of the chest. We're going to put it under, we're going to put it underneath and pull through. Now I will tell you in the beginning, it's going to feel a little bit weird, almost like it's not working, but I assure you it is. As soon as you get that first spiral going and you come back around to about right here, you're like, ah, I see it. I feel it. It makes sense now. Trust the process. So we're going to make another C swinging inwards on this next rope right here. We're going to go underneath it, underneath, and then we're going to just pull on through. Make sure we tighten that up. Now this area right here is going to be the most flat part of the entire spiral. And the rest of it, when it goes around this way and underneath, we're going to try and have that be as small as possible. I can move on to this next one. Now I'm not going to show you the entire process of doing this over and over and over again. It does get a bit meticulous, but you have to enjoy the process. It's fun. It's like coloring something in. Yeah, it takes time, but you enjoy the moments, every moment of it. We're painting with rope here. So as you saw, we created that C swinging inward towards the middle of the chest. We went over the rope underneath and then through the little uh, bit of loop we had created for ourselves. So let's keep it going. Create a C. Over, under, and through the loop. Over, under, through the loop. If you're not overly familiar with half hitches, you will be after today. Now the fun part is you get to choose the distance that the spiral starts at. So you can see how it was very close up here and got slowly just a little bit further away each time. So each time you do one of these C's, you can move them a little bit, you can do a few C's and then move them a little bit. When you do this half hitch around the base, that there isn't much room for adjustment after that. So make sure you have the length of rope you want to at the time. Create another C over, under, through the loop. And you will notice, or you'll start to notice, that the base, which seemed a little bit more flimsy at first, is now being cemented in place with the web. That's the glory of it. You're making the spiral, you're making the spider web stronger and stronger with each half hitch that you do with it. And the more you do it, the better at it you get, and so on and so on. The nice thing about this process, this pattern, it allows you to practice the pattern over and over again which means you get better at it. Getting better and learning is one of the best things we can do for ourselves. If I had a bad time, I like to treat myself to white chocolate or buying plants, mostly buying myself flowers. But for the most part, the thing that I always have is the rope. Being able to have fun, mess around, 
create, forget the perils of life. <laughs> and I hope through my videos I've helped you realize something you didn't know you loved quite as much. That's all I really care about. Inspiring and making people happy. So I'm going to speed up time a little bit, get to near the end of the whole entire process, and show you how to end it officially, where to stop the webbing, and where to go from there. Now I've made a bunch of progress and a bunch of webbing. I'm starting to run out of rope. I have about two and a half to three feet left. And what I want to do is finish up for the time being. Usually picking somewhere that's near uh, underneath the arm helps hide where you uh, actually ended the webbing. Kind of gives that illusion that it continues on or just makes it look a little bit more clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross over it and then go under. over and under then I'm gonna go over myself and then I'm going to follow follow the red rope to the back and then for here what I'm gonna do is wrap around that a few times just to use up my rope and we'll create some X friction down here so once we go underneath We had this vertical and horizontal plane, and we're going to just finish up there. So I went down this way. We're gonna go back up that way, the same way we had just come. We're gonna go over and under, and then we're gonna go crossing the other way around. So up and over, which as you can see, creates a little bit of an X. I'm gonna go under, I'm gonna cross over this bad boy right here, through that loop, kind of creating a half hitch like we have been doing. Lock that in place. There we go. Nice way of ending that. Which leads to our spiraling spider web pattern. Now, mind you that this is with a half hitch. If you don't like the way that that looks, well, undo that and I'll show you what it looks like with the munter. Now, I've already got this munter hitch uh, of the spider web going, and I just want to show you the two different ways of performing a munter hitch, or what's known as a crossover hitch. And I think knowing it as a crossover hitch might be a little bit easier. So we're going to start by going over the base. It's then going to go underneath and around. And then the rope is going to cross over itself. Ah yes, the crossover hitch. And then it's going to go underneath and on its way again. Munter hitch, crossover hitch. So it goes over, underneath, and then crosses over itself underneath again. Munter hitch, crossover hitch, yes. Now there is a different way to do the munter hitch that keeps the same uh, aesthetic as you see right here, because these two look different. It's basically doing it in backwards, doing a backwards pattern. And the way I do that is much like we did with the half hitch. We're gonna create a C that swings inward towards the middle of the chest, but instead of going over, it's going to go under. Yeah, that's the difference between a munter and a half hitch. One goes over, the other goes under. So we got this little loop that we created for ourselves. We're going to cross over the base rope and go through that loop. Now you can already tell that they are in opposite right now, seeing how they're mirroring each other right now. I feel that with the way that the spiral of the spider head works, instead of doing the normal way to do a munter or a crossover hitch, you do the backwards way, which is what I uh, have been doing with this one. So let me finish that up and I'll show you the end result. And here we have the Munter Hitch spiderweb backslash spiral. Uh, you know, now that I look at it more and now that I think about it and I've gone through the process a few times, I think I like the Munter Hitch more than I do the half hitch for it. It just feels better. It feels right. It feels more constructed. But yet again, there's many different ways to do it. That's what makes it fun. I want you to go out there for your homework rope and try and experiment. Try something different than a munter hitch or a crossover hitch or a, a half hitch. Play around with it. See what you can find. You're brilliant and I know you're brilliant. My goal is to make you better than me, so go ahead and do that. Also, as a helpful tip, if you're going to be doing this a few times, don't undo the web first undo the base. It's easier to undo the base and remove it, I'll show you that in a second, than to undo the webbing and reapply it. It's easier to take off the base, take the webbing out that way, and put the base back on. All you gotta do is unlock the base from behind, and it's simply just going to 
if you hold the knots on the opposite side, the hitches on the opposite side, you just pull the rope through. Follow the base rope backwards and just pull it through all the hitches. Now the thing about the hitches is that they just, they're basically twisted. So it's not like you have to undo those knots like an overhand knot like this one up here. That way, when you get through it all, you have what looks like a tangle of hitches. But as soon as you bring the rope through it, they're just twisted. You just gotta shake out that rope, get it untwisted, and start up again. Your base is already right here. Reapply the base, reapply the web. Just that simple. Well, hey, I hope you had as much fun learning from that tutorial as we did uh, teaching it to you. She's out buying spiders. Yes, she wanted to be closer to her eight-legged kind. I fully anticipate it. She is a menace. I definitely plan on stopping her. She only has Monopoly money anyway, so it's not like she could really do much with that. Anywho, I would be remiss if I did not bring up my other lovely sponsors for today, the wonderful people over at Patreon. That's patreon.com backslash Rory's Brainworks, just like this YouTube channel. They are my rope vanguard, my colonizers of dreams. And without them, these ropey endeavors would be way harder to accomplish. Thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this madness, and comment down below what kind of ropey things you would like us to teach you. As always, I'm Rory. This is our brain. I'm fairly certain it works. Be safe and go create some art.